Hello, hello, it's Monday. It's Monday, March the 9th. It's another Ndini Live. How are you? How are you? It's so great to have you join me this morning. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you did, I don't know, fun stuff. I hope it was a productive weekend. Um, help me understand this, okay? This is one thing that I do not understand. What is it with North America and Europe and this time shifting thing? Like, who is that for? Why do clocks go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards? Completely confusing, completely annoying, because now I have to go and change every single clock. Um, whoever it's for, why can't they just get up an hour earlier? But I digress. Anyway, um, I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you did something fun. And I just wanted to to share with you actually what's been happening over the last um, last week since the last time that I was on. Well, it's been a really interesting week. It's been a week of <sighs> extremes. It's been the best of weeks. It's been the worst of weeks. Um, let me start with the best because good to start on a, on a high note. So anybody who knows me, you know that I am a huge, massive, massive Rachel Hollis fan. And uh, this week I got to spend three days at her RISE conference, um, hearing from her, hearing from different speakers, um, just being immersed in the whole experience. And it was super inspiring, phenomenal experience. And I got to meet Rachel, which was amazing. Um, she's just super sweet, super kind. I got to have a conversation with her, which was truly just a, a wonderful thing. On the flip side of that, as I said, it's been best and worst. This week, I was truly challenged. I had to make a decision that has huge impacts for me, for my team, um, for lots of other people. As you know, for many, many weeks now, many, many weeks, months even, I've been talking about Woman on Fire Summit, which is happening on April the 5th, 2020 in Toronto. My very first live event, a lot of work has gone into curating the speakers, creating the panels, creating a phenomenal experience. And this week I had to make a decision about, in light of the current global health crisis that's happening as a result of the coronavirus, would we continue? Would we proceed with the date that we had set? Or did we need to look at postponing the event? As you can imagine, it was like a really hard decision for me to make. There's been a lot of money invested in this event. There's been a lot of time. There's been a lot of incredible hard work that's gone into it. And so reaching a decision about the direction we would take regarding the conference um, was not something that I did lightly, was not something that came easily. I had to also think about in the bigger picture, we have speakers who are flying in, we have guests who are flying in. And so just within that, the risk of some of these speakers, you know, are flying in from areas that have confirmed cases. We have confirmed cases in Toronto and also our guests are flying in, some of them from uh, all over the world. And so I had to think about it from the place of being responsible versus from the place of ego. And so I unfortunately had to make the decision this week to postpone Woman on Fire Summit. And here's what happened when I made that decision to postpone. Okay. Um, it was an emotional decision for me. Uh, it was a truly emotional decision for me because, as I said, there's so much tied into this. Gosh, I'm, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. There's so much tied into this from a financial perspective, but more so from the perspective of the team that has been part of creating this event. They have worked so hard, so hard over the last few months. And it felt in many ways that I, as the leader of the team, was letting them down in some way by deciding to postpone the event because they've put so much work towards this date. But then there was the other part of me that thought about, well, 
Yes, they put a lot of work into it, but what will it mean if somebody comes to the event and either comes at the event and unknowingly has the virus and spreads it at the event and that leads to them getting sick or worse still, somebody dying as a result? How would I feel? You know, I would in some way be responsible for that and my decision would be responsible for that. And so I had to make the decision and I made the decision and actually the official announcement will be going out later this morning. And in making that decision, I found myself reverting to some of my coping mechanisms and my bad behaviors in terms of, for me, um, anytime I'm in crisis, anytime I'm dealing with difficult things, my default tends to be coping with food. Um, I actually had a conversation with my event planner where I ended the conversation by saying to her, I just need to go and eat some potato chips because that literally was where my mind was at. But then it just so happened that I was listening to a podcast because as you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts and for some reason, which is, I don't know if you believe in God, the universe, things just happen. I had listened to an interview that a gentleman named Hal Alrod had done several months ago. I think it might have been more, more than a year ago. And Hal Alrod is the, um, he wrote the book, The Miracle Morning. And he talked in that interview about the fact that he's a man who had faced death. He was in a very serious car accident that literally ended his life. I believe they had to resuscitate him three times. He was told he would never walk. Um, and he talked about his recovery from that accident. And he said that he remembered something that he had been told by um, a coach or a mentor of his who had said to him, you get five minutes. You get five minutes to feel sorry for yourself, to cry, to be sad, to do whatever it is that you want to do, to be in that victim mode. Five minutes. And then when that five minutes is over, you remind yourself that you can't change anything and you need to switch from being a victim to figuring out solutions, to switch from being in victim mentality to, in fact, switch from being a reactor to a responder. So in any situation that you're in, you get to choose. You always have the choice to choose whether you want to react to the situation or you want to respond. Reacting is very much being a victim. Woe is me. This is awful. Why is this happening to me? Dear God, eat potato chips and all of that. And when I listened to that, I was reminded that, oh my gosh, here I was in victim mode. Here I was feeling sorry for myself about all the decisions that I'd have to make, all of the impacts. I'd have to call the sponsors. I'd have to call all the speakers, all the panelists to say that we'd made this decision to postpone. Or I could look at it from the other perspective and look at it from a power place and say, okay, fine, we're not gonna be able to run this event on April the 5th, but what does this mean for us? How can this be a positive for us? And so that's really been what the mindset that I adopted. I literally was like, snap out of it, you're done. No more crying, no more potato chips. Um, and just really own the fact that you get to choose the decisions that you make from now on out. You get to choose to lead the team. I ultimately have to remember that I have a team that I'm working with and they're looking to me for leadership. And so if I'm going to fall apart, if I'm going to go into victim mode, then what do I expect them to do? And so that really is something I wanted to share with you that in real time, this is something that I am dealing with. In real time, this is something that I'm going through and I always wanna show up here and be honest and transparent with you and say that there are some times when I struggle and this was one of those times, but I also wanted to share with you that perspective that give yourself five minutes. Give yourself the five minutes to mourn, to cry, to be sad, to be angry, whatever that emotion is that you need to get out and then figure out, okay, how do I move forward? Take back the power, and rather than reacting to your situation, think about how you can respond to your situation. Take back the power from the situation. There's nothing you can do about the situation. It is what it is, but how can you choose in this moment to respond? 
So that was what I wanted to share with you today. I wish you all an incredible week. I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful and productive week. And I want to say to anybody who was looking forward to Woman on Fire Summit, we are still going to have Woman on Fire Summit in 2020. We just need to figure out a new date. Um, at this point, we have to wait until the health crisis is over. There are still new cases being diagnosed even in the area that we were going to have this summit. And so once the situation normalizes, once um, things have stabilized, then we'll work with all of our speakers, all of our panelists, all of our sponsors, all of that to, um, to put out to let you know of a new date it will still be in fact i actually think that you know again choosing to respond to the situation it gives us more time um to think about how we can make this a truly truly even more phenomenal experience so i want to wish you an amazing week and i will see you same time same place next week thank you thanks everybody for joining